Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. My name is Whitney <laughs> and welcome back to another Sunday Sew Along. Today we are in part two of our B6702 Sew Along. So today we're going to go over um, the pieces that you should have cut out of your fashion fabric including the ones, um, the pieces that should be interfaced now. I am using uh, Palmer Pletch uh, Sew Shear Perfect Shear. Perfect, perfect Fuse Shear. I think it's it's, it's linked down below <laughs> for my interfacing. Um, I talked about that last week, but that is what I am using. And then after that, we're going to sew the darts on our bodice front and back, um, and then attach the yoke, and I'm gonna show you, and then attach the back and the front together at the um, shoulder seams using the uh, burrito method, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, no side seams, we're not gonna do side seams yet. And then we're gonna construct our skirt, but we're gonna leave the bodice and skirt separate. So obviously if you were making a shirt and not a shirt dress, you will not be doing the skirt, um, but I thought I would go ahead and make the skirt so that it can be hanging. Now I'm using a cotton lawn for my dress, so I don't anticipate the um, hem falling. Also because it's there's seven panels around the entire skirt, and the more panels you have, the less bias you have at the hem, so the less chance you have of things dropping. But if anything is going to drop, um, I wanted to go ahead and do it so that I can get things hemmed up when the dress is finished. So I am going to be making my um, skirt and then the bodice and then the skirt I'm just going to let hang for um, while we finish up the, the collar and do our sleeves and all of that's going to get um, done before we attach the bodice to the skirt. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. So then we'll stop and then next week we'll be doing the collar and collar stand and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, that's all we've got. I hope you, uh, or put any questions you have down below because I'm happy to answer any of those and I will get to those as soon as I can. And if you've enjoyed the um, information you've received today and would like to help support the channel, I do have a coffee account where it's just like a virtual tip jar if you'd like to help support the channel, channel in that way. So that is, there's a link for that down below. All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you guys soon. Bye. Okay, let's go through our pieces that are all cut out of fashion fabric. First, I'm gonna go through um, the pieces that I have uh, interfaced. So first thing, let's see, we've got our collar pieces, which is piece 11. Um, I have cut two of these and I have interfaced one of them with my uh, Profuse Sheer, I think that's what it's called, <laughs> the Palmer Pletch, the Sheer. Um, just one collar piece. And then we've got our collars stand here somewhere. Here it is. Collar stand, which is piece 12. Um, the same thing. I have two of these and I have cut out or um, interfused, interfused, interfaced, interfaced one of them. The other one has not been interfaced. So there are those two pieces. And let's see, next we've got our band, the front band that is our button band, basically. Um, you cut four of these, make sure you cut four. Um, you've got four out of fabric and then I have fused interfacing to the back of two of them. So the other two do not have any interfacing. Uh, so one of those will be, um, two of those will be the kind of the facings or the inside part of those pieces. So make sure you do four. That's something you don't want to miss because that's kind of a, a long piece. Also, with this uh, band, I decided, you know, I mentioned that I had shortened the skirt by two inches for my height, uh, but I didn't want it as long as view C, but I wanted it longer than view A, so I actually picked a point in between um, view A and C, which was four and a half inches. So I went four and a half inches down from view A and drew um, a line, and that's where I cut all of my skirt pieces, and then I also cut my band because the band goes down the length of the dress and then the final interfacing is the cuff piece and the cuff is piece 15 and uh, you cut out two because these get folded eventually um, you know wrong sides together when all is said and done so you need to put interfacing on the back of both of those pieces they're just big rectangles but you need interfacing on the back of those one for each sleeve so those are that's all the interfacing um, that you need for this pattern. Uh, then we've got our back bodice piece that has uh, a dart. And so I have cut it out. It gets cut out on the fold. This is piece four. I, anything that gets cut out on the fold, um, I also go ahead and mark center on both the, 
the top and the bottom because that's going to get connected to a yoke and also a skirt. So I go ahead and mark that. I just find it easier to line things up when I'm sewing. I've marked my dart and so there's the back. That's all ready to go. We'll be using that piece today. Um, what else we got here? We've got our continuous lap. Um, so I'm showing you for this dress how to do the continuous lap placket method on the sleeve for the sleeve vent. Um, I will also be showing you how to do the tower placket. So if you are doing a tower, if you're opting to do a tower placket, even for this pattern, instead of the continuous lap, you'll just need two of those tower plackets cut out as well. And those do not get interfaced, either the tower placket or, um, I say that some patterns do interface them. I'm not interfacing the continuous lap placket. Um, I guess it kind of just depends on your fabric. If you want to do your tower placket interfaced or not, it doesn't really matter. I may actually end up doing that. I haven't decided what fabric I'm going to be using for that example yet. But anyway, you'll want two of those, one for each sleeve, whether it's the tower placket or the continuous lap. Um, what else do we have here? Let's see. This is my bodice front. I get two. I need two of these cut out. Um, I've already marked my dart uh, to be sewn. You just need two of those for the front. We'll be using that today. That's the thing I hate about the tissue paper is that when you plop things down, things go everywhere. All right. Also, the yoke back. Now, also make sure that you're paying attention to this. You cut two of these on the fold. So you'll have an inner and an outer. We're going to do the burrito method to do our yoke today. Um, so you'll need two yoke pieces, both of them cut on the fold. Um, no interfacing, but yeah, go ahead and cut those two out. And then we've got your sleeve. So we've got two sleeves. Um, you want to mark all your notches and then make sure you mark your pleat notches down here and also your notches for your um, vent that we're going to be putting in and mark the top of that vent. So I've cut into the fabric right here at all three of these lines. So this is the line that we'll actually end up cutting. These are the lines we will sew on and this is the line we'll actually end up cutting on and this is kind of the same um, no matter what you're doing. Now, we'll get into this more, but when we put in a tower placket, we're not gonna sew a dart kind of shape here. It's not really a dart, it's a triangle, I guess. <laughs> I shouldn't confuse you. You won't be sewing this triangle shape. Um, it's more, it's a box. So it's a, it's different, but you do still need to mark these three at the bottom and then mark how high you want it up to go. So no matter if you're doing the continuous lap or the tower placket, you do need to mark those four points. So the top and then each side in the center. Okay, and then finally, I'm grouping all of my pattern pieces over here together. Finally, you want all of your skirt pieces. So that consists of two side fronts, two side backs, um, two front pieces, and then one back piece that gets cut on the fold. And again, I short or I lengthen them from or shortened, however you want to look at it. <laughs> I went in between the cut line for view A and C, um, which was four and a half inches up from C and four and a half inches down from A. And that's where I cut my hems. You can kind of see right here where I've done that. Um, and we'll just play with those then when I get to the hemming stage on if I want to shorten it or how, yeah, obviously I can't lengthen it from that point, but I think it should be fine. <laughs> so there we have it. Those are all the pieces that we should have. So for today, what I want you to grab are all of your skirt pieces and there should be seven panels total. So that's two front pieces, two side front pieces, two side back pieces, and one center back piece that gets cut on the fold. Um, so we're actually just gonna sew all those up so that that can be hanging while we're making the rest of the um, shirt dress. So all your skirt pieces, um, and then you're gonna want your two yoke pieces, your front bodice pieces, there's two of them, and then there's one center back piece that's cut on the fold. And that's what we will be using today. So I'm now going to go over to the sewing machine and we will get sewing. All right, so we've got everything all set up here. Um, again, we are working with our two yoke pieces, our two front pieces, and our one back piece. Now I am going to set those aside though because first we're gonna sew our skirt together. So basically we've got seven panels here for our skirt. Um, 
that are going to get sewn kind of in a, um, well, not really a circle because obviously the front is going to be open for the buttons. So what I like to do is we are first going to start with, got a lot of pieces here. <laughs> and this just kind of gets them out of the way too. These can be bulky. Okay, I'm going to start with the skirt back, which is this piece right here. And this one will be cut on the fold. Just gonna set it right side up. And then I'm going to take my side back pieces, which I'm assuming are these. Yep, this one's the side back. So you'll have one back piece and then two side back pieces. And you should have notches that match everything up. Set all this side here. Um, because I'm working with cotton lawn, I'm gonna wait and stay stitch my waistline after I've sewn all my panels together. But if you're working with like a um, anything with like a tinsel in it or a rayon um, or something that's a little heavier and drapier, you may want to go ahead and stay stitch all of your pieces at the waistline now um, before you sew them together. But since I'm working with a very stable cotton lawn, I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, but I am gonna do it. I'm just not gonna worry about it until the end. So I've got one notch that's here on the side of my center back pieces, which is going to get matched up with the um, side back pieces. So the side back pieces have one side that has one notch and one side that has two. So we want the side that has one and we're going to put it right sides together. And when I'm working with anything with a lot of bias, I like to start at the hem and sew up. Just totally through those other pieces on the floor here. Just gonna set those aside for a minute. All right, so I'm gonna start at the bottom and I am sewing my side back pieces to my center back piece. We've got a uh, five eight uh, seam allowance or 1.5 centimeters. And I'm just straight stitching here. I'm starting on new line of stitching. So there's always a long piece there at that. Okay. And then on the other side of the center back, I'm going to sew my other side back piece. Again, make sure, so you don't get confused, make sure you're matching up notches. The side back to center back is just a one notch. And I like to start from the bottom and sew my way up. Again, I'm not going to have as many issues with this fabric because it is a lawn. But definitely if you're using anything with the rayon, you should have already stay stitched your waistband. I'm going to do mine here at the end. I also like to say any snoring or snorting you hear in the background is Gidget, my dog. She has actually decided to join me in the sewing room today. So, <laughs> all right. So now we have this one, uh, you know, like this big kind of back piece. Uh, obviously these need to be surged still, but I'm going to do that at the very end. This is just a, a quicker way to do things. So now I'm going to grab my side front pieces. I think for these. All right, now the skirt side front pieces should have one side that has two notches, and it does. Those are the ones we're concerned with right now. So we are going to put side front to side back, and we're matching the two notches. So the side front pieces also have two notches and one notch. So we're concerned only with the side with two notches right now. Okay, same thing. I'm starting at the bottom and sewing my way up. And then on the other side of this, I'm going to sew the other side front. Matching my two notches. This is getting to be quite a large piece of fabric. It's okay. All right. All 
All right, and then finally, we're gonna sew our front pieces on. And our front pieces should just have a notch on one side, and it's a single notch, and that should match up with our side front pieces. We're doing those right sides together, and again, sewing from the bottom up. And you just want to kind of keep track so you don't accidentally, you know, like sew two fronts together thinking that you're, you are adding to the correct side. I mean, you just want to make sure you're following your notches and that, um, you know, that you're putting the single notch side to a single notch side. And Although I will say when I was attaching side front to side back, my double notches didn't match up very well. And that could be because that's the side, the pieces that I was altering to add a little bit to the waist. But keep an eye out for that. <laughs> they didn't match, but I did know that the side with two notches goes with the side with two notches, and that's fine. Okay, now, uh, now that I have all the panels sewn together, and they're sewn together exactly how they're gonna be because the front obviously is gonna get the front band eventually. Um, I'm now gonna go over to the serger and I'm going to serge all the seams that I just did. Um, and then we're gonna press and then stay stitch our waistline. Again, if you're using anything with a rayon, tinsel, anything that's super heavy, you will have wanted to stay stitch each panel individually. So I'm just gonna serge all these seams I just sewed. Okay, once everything is surged, I'm gonna go press my seams and I'm gonna basically press everything to this side seam. So my front seams, I'm gonna to press towards the side seams. My back seams, I'll press all towards the side seam. Um, and the actual side seam, I'm gonna to press towards the back. So um, I'm gonna to go to the ironing board, or the, yeah, the ironing board real quick. And I'm gonna press those seams and then I'll be right back um, to do some stay stitching. Okay, once everything is surged and pressed, I'm now going to sew um, a state line of stay stitching right inside 5 eighths of an inch because that's my seam allowance. Um, I'm going to sew from center front to center back, and then I'll start at the other center front and go to center back. And now our skirt is done for the time being. Obviously, if you're just making a regular shirt, you don't need to do this step. So <laughs> it's only for making uh, the dress and, and in particular, you know, well, this is a good idea if you're doing any kind of shirt dress. So now I'm just going to hang this. I'm going to put it, you can either put it on a hanger, you can pin it to a dress form, but I'm just going to hang it and let it hang while we're making everything else because um, we're not, yeah, we won't see this now for a while. So I'm going to go do that and then we're going to work on our bodices. Okay, now while this is a little bit different sew along than normal because, um, you know, all of these steps can very easily be used for pretty much any shirt or shirt dress pattern that has your standard um, basic parts, um, I did, I, I am using uh, Butterick 6702, and so I did want to just go through the instructions really quickly. So basically the skirt portion that we just did was steps 13 through 16. Um, so we, we're definitely going out of order, but now we're going to go back to step and we've already interfaced. So we're going to go back to step two, um, 
So now we're doing, and I'm not doing this the way that they do it. Uh, I don't do my yolks this way. So this is going to be different. Um, and I'm not going to sew my side seams yet. But basically, I am doing uh, steps 2 through 11 in the instructions, but my own way. So <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing to finish off today. So I did just want to touch on that because I know some people do like to follow along with the instructions. And, uh, you know, when I'm doing things my own way, it can get kind of confusing. All right. So now we're looking at our bodice pieces, which is the front, the back, and the two yoke pieces. Um, let's do... Let's do our back first. So put your front aside. So I have my back and I have my two yokes. First, we need to sew our darts. So I'm actually gonna put you, um, and I've showed the way that I sew my darts. It's actually kind of a new way that I sew my darts. I just really like it. Um, I'm gonna set the pattern pieces to the side. But I'm gonna put you in my lap and I'm gonna show you how um, I've been sewing my darts here recently. Um, it's just become a real, a new favorite way for me to do it. So I'm going to show you how I do that on my back pieces. Um, but I am, I'm going to go ahead, actually, I'm going to do it on my front too. I'm going to go ahead and sew all four darts. So I'm going to sew the two darts in the back and the two darts on the front um, right now. So I will show you how I do that on one. And basically, you know, it's the same on all four. So I'll put you in front of the sewing machine. Okay, so basically this is the bottom of the dart, bottom of my shirt, you can see um, I've clipped, those are the bottom legs of my dart, and then this white pin is the tip of my dart, because obviously I'm assuming you can't see my, my uh, sorry, dot there. But what I do is, and of course you can definitely draw in your dart if that helps you to sew it. But I start sewing, um, well I sew my dart, Now, you can tell this is my point right here. I'm getting close to that. So I get right up to that so that I'm right on the fold at that point. And then I pick it up, turn it around, and I'm gonna sew back right along the fold of that dart for like, I don't know, inch, inch and a half. And then I backstitch, and it's basically backstitching into the, bu the bulk of the dart. So you don't get the pucker. You see, there's the tip right there. And I've backstitched into the bulk of the dart here. So that's how I like to do my darts. So now I'm going to sew the other dart on the back and both of the front darts really quick. And then um, I'll come back and we'll do our yoke. Okay, so I have all of my darts sewn both of the ones on the back and both of my front darts. Um, I have pressed my front darts towards the side seam and I've pressed my um, back darts towards center back. So I'm gonna set my two front pieces aside for just a bit. So I've got my back piece and it is um, right side up, obviously. And you wanna pick one of your yokes. It doesn't really, it doesn't matter which one. <laughs> set the other one aside for a minute. And we are going to sew these, actually my preferred method, turn your back wrong side up. I actually prefer to do, I do this in two swipes just to get it nice and perfect. So now we are going to sew the right side. This is going to be the inside yoke basically. So the right side of this yoke piece to the wrong side of um, your back piece. So when you've got them laid on top of each other, you're going to see the wrong side of both. That's what we want. I'm going to match up center back. Because I not I always mark that when I am sewing, um, when I'm cutting things out on the fold. And there's a little bit of shaping in this seam line um, because basically a lot of times with um, shirts they've taken a shoulder dart and moved it into that yoke seam. So usually there's just a little bit of shaping. So I'm actually gonna sew with my yoke down and I'm gonna sew this at 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter seam allowance. And you'll see why in just a second. So this I'm just doing at one centimeter or 3 eighths. Okay, once we've done that pass, once we've 
done that pass, we are going to now sew the other yoke piece. So now we've got our one yoke piece that's on the back. And then we have our other, so now we've got right side of the back up. We're gonna sew our other yoke piece right sides together. So you're basically sandwiching your back in between the two yoke pieces. You could have done this all in one pass. I just think that this is easier um, and it keeps everything a little bit more controlled. And this time I'm gonna sew with um, the, my seam line that I've just sewn up just because that's already stable and I'm wanting to ease in a little bit the other yoke piece. So now I'm gonna sew at the seam allowance, which is um, 5 eighths or 1.5 centimeters. Okay, so we have, if you fold it up, we've got two yoke pieces with the back in between there. Now, you can definitely, if you're finding that there's a lot of bulk in there, this is pretty lightweight fabric. I don't know that I really need to trim my seam allowance, but if you're using a denim or something, definitely trim this seam allowance down. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm going to press both of these yoke pieces up because we're gonna top stitch. So I'm just gonna go to the ironing board and I'm just gonna press on bo from both sides both of these um, yoke pieces up. So that seam will be in between, obviously, those two yokes. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now um, everything's been pressed up. So there is the right side. There is the wrong side. Um, I'm just gonna go and top stitch. You don't have to, but it's kind of a nice detail on a shirt. I'm just gonna top stitch that seam at about a quarter of an inch um, onto the yoke. You definitely don't have to do that, but I do think it's a nice um, look on a shirt. But you still have, you know, everything is still, don't sew anything else up together because you still want these to be separate. All right, now we're going to attach our fronts. Okay, so you're going to want, we're gonna again, turn our back wrong side up. And actually what we're gonna do is our yoke that is on the right side, we're actually gonna fold that out of the way. So, um, you know, I've got the yoke piece here, but this yoke piece on the right side, I'm folding it down and out of the way for right now. So wrong side up, and you're actually going to be sewing your shoulder seams, uh, wrong side of the front to technically the right side of the inside yoke. And this is just the one yoke piece. The other yoke, um, you know, we flipped out of the way because we're gonna burrito that here in just a second. So I'm gonna pin that, and then the same for the other side. So basically this is what it would look like, um, well actually this is what it would look like if you were French seaming, for instance, if you didn't have um, the second layer of yoke, if you were sewing your wrong sides together. Line pins. Okay, so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Okay, so this is basically what we've got. We've got our um, two fronts that are attached to the shoulder of our yoke. But then if you flip this over to the right side of our back, that yoke piece is it, it's out of play right now. It's just hanging down. So we're gonna do the same that we did with the yoke and we're gonna sew this first pass at 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter.
Okay, so once we've done that at one centimeter or three-eighths of an inch, this is where the burrito comes in. So you're gonna lay your shirt down. I may be out of frame here at the bottom, but I'm just laying everything nice and flat. Also, don't worry about your fronts not touching. Remember, you're gonna have bands when all is said and done. <laughs> okay, and starting at the bottom of the shirt, I'm actually going to just roll it. So I am rolling the front and the back, rolling it all the way up. And see, as you start to roll, your other yoke piece that you laid down starts to peek out. So then we have the yoke piece that we sewed and our other yoke piece, and we wanna sew those right sides together. So we're gonna take that yoke and bring it up, right sides together with that quick little seam we sewed at, at uh, three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. pin this on both sides. So this kind of looks like a burrito. We'll be using the burrito technique also when we're attaching the collar to the uh, shirt on another day. You use the burrito effect a, a lot and you can use it on cuffs too. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. And now I'm gonna sew those shoulder seams again. It doesn't really matter which one's on top. Um, but at 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters, which is the seam allowance. Again, you can definitely trim your, oopsie, hold on. My uh, neck edge here got turned under. Let me fix that real quick. Okay. <laughs> Now you can go ahead and trim that seam allowance if you'd like. Um, again, I have very thin fabric, so I'm not. I'm just not going to because I kind of like having that bulk in there just to help with my top stitching, but it's up to you. You can definitely trim that if you would like, especially if you do have a thicker fabric. So now we're just gonna grab one side of our burrito, doesn't really matter which, and pull it right side out. then everything should be nicely enclosed along that yoke. So there is the back of our shirt, and here is the front of our shirt. And we've got our, our yokes all nicely and finished. Um, everything's pulled right side out. So I'm really gonna quickly go, and I'm going to press um, this shoulder seam, pressing the yoke, um, you know, pressing the seam allowances obviously towards the yoke, because that's where they're encased. And then I'm just gonna go in top stitch um, right along that shoulder seam, just like I did for the yoke. So I'm gonna go press them and then we're gonna top stitch. All right, once those are pressed, I'm just gonna top stitch a quarter inch of away onto, from the seam onto the yoke. Again, this is optional. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. And then a little final step for today is I'm basically just going to baste my, um, well, I'm kind of stay stitching the neckline and basting my yoke pieces together. It'll just make attaching everything a little easier in the long run. So I'm going to sew here in the um, arm's eye, I'm going to sew just baste together um, those two yoke pieces at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. On both sides. And 
And then on the neck edge, um, I'm going to start at the shoulder seam and sew towards center back, also at a quarter of an inch. And then I'll go from the other side and do the same thing. And again, um, you can also stay stitch your front neckline too if you'd like. Um, I've got cotton lawn, so I'm, I'm going to be a rebel. Uh, but anyway, uh, that just basting it at a quarter of an inch just keeps those layers together. Um, so when we put in the sleeves and the collar, they don't cause problems. So there we have it. That's what we're going to stop for today. So we should have our yoke attached, our front and the back are attached at the shoulder seams. We are, do not do your side seams yet. We're going to wait. Actually, that'll be um, quite a bit down the road because we're going to put our sleeves in before we do those side seams. Uh, so next week we will cover the um, how to sew our collar and collar stand and then we'll be attaching it into the shirt. So I will see you guys then. Don't forget to leave any questions you have down below and I'll get those answered as soon as possible. Have a good Sunday, guys. See you next time. Mm -hmm.